Hello everyone, so in this video let us talk about the first three problems from the latest code forces round 792 so let's start and I also make a video for the fourth problem as well so stay tuned on this channel. The first problem is digit minimization so there is an integer n without like without zeros in that in the decimal representation. Alice and Bob are playing a game in which Alice start first they play the game in an alternative term by term manner. In her turn, Alice must swap any two digits of the integer that like of different position. So you have an integer, you can change any two digit positions inside that number you have. And in the Bob turn, he will remove the last digit of the integer. Now that game will keep on proceeding and it will end when only one digit is remaining inside that integer that is we are doing on this operation on. So in the end, you just want the smallest digit as possible. That's the whole objective for Alice to accomplish. Now, what you can directly say is that if I want the smallest digit, I somehow want the smallest digit to be in the very start so that or like it should not be popped out by Bob eventually. Okay. But in the first problems in all the code forces round, try to see over the different examples they are given to you because most of the intuition you can get from the examples only. So the first example is 12 and in 12, I want that the smallest digit is one. So the answer should be one, but the answer is two. So you got some actually abnormality out of here. So you can directly see is that if there are two digits, you will, Alice will start first. So she would always swap this digit out and whatever is the second digit will come first and the first digit will go in the second position. And obviously the last digit will be popped out. So the answer will always be the second digit in this scenario. If, if, if we just have two digits now, but if we have more than two digits, then obviously in those scenarios, as you can see, whatever is the minimum, we can just print out the minimum. Uh, why it is happening let us also talk about that also if let's say I have a number that is one three two and I want one to be the smallest number that is the last we popped out if I in the first chance Alice swap these two digits out the answer will be one two three Bob will pop out this digit and now Alice have to obviously swap this out and like it will become equal to two one and one is popped out so the answer is not this is not the correct way but what you can do is that you can just take the smallest number and bring it to the second last position by second last I, I mean like this so you can just swap instead of these two you can swap these two and what you can actually do is it will become like this three one and two now you will keep popping out the elements from the end and you can swap whatever you want but in the last chance when like before the before popping out the smallest number what you can do is Alice will swap now these two elements out and one will come to the first and this number will popped out and the answer will be the smallest number that is left in the first position that's the overall way but you don't have to think about how all this happening you just have to be quick in the first problem so the, the overall thing is that if it has of length 2 then the answer is whatever is the second digit but uh, if it is of length greater than 2 then the answer is whatever is the smallest in t like digit inside this whole integer so that's the overall thing you just take the input as a string so that you can just sort it out uh, to find out the smallest digit you just have to check that whether if the size is 2 and the answer is like the second digit that is the index 1 uh, or else you can just sort out all the digits inside this integer and just print out the zeroth one that is the smallest one cool that's the first problem the second problem is z mod x equal to c now the problem statement goes like this that you're given three integers a b and c you have to find out three positive integers x y and z such that these three conditions are fulfilled now the conditions are x mod y equal to a y mod z is equal to b as well as z mod x is equal to c now you have to satisfy these three conditions and have to find out three different integers that is uh, you have to find out uh, x y and z and a b c is given to you now it is also given that a is smaller than b b is smaller than c like strictly smaller now this problem in this type of problems you have to just go by and hit and try method only just uh, or maybe you can solve out these equations but generally just try to form a different type of combinations with a and b and c and just try to see that whether which of them is following the condition so what you can at least see is let us write down these equations so that it will become a little bit handy for us so the first first equation is that we have x mod y is equal to a then y mod z is equal to b as well as z mod x i think this word yes is equal to c okay now let's say that if i suppose that if you know what is modular arithmetic a little bit about it if let's say i have 10 mod 2 the answer is 0 because 
there is no remainder when 10 divided by 2. But if I take this as a number larger than 10, that is let's say 10 mod, let's say 11 or maybe 12, then obviously the answer is this number completely. Why? Because this number will not divide it and the remainder is this complete number. So what you can directly do is let's say I make this x a very large number or not a large number larger than z. So if I just come with this type of thinking in my mind, I can directly make my z equal to c. So let us take that I have z equal to c. If I have z equal to c, my x should be larger than z obviously. Okay. Now moving down to this equation. If I similarly use this analogy here that I have like z equal to c. So y mod c is equal to b. So obviously y can be b plus c. Okay, so if I make like y equal to b plus c, then obviously this condition will be satisfied because c, if I made y plus c mod c, then obviously this number will be vanished out and only, okay, sorry. So y, so if my y is equal to b plus c and if I mod this with, let's say c, then the answer will be b. Okay, because this will be removed out by modulo and the remainder will be b. Okay, similarly now I have my y equal to b plus c and if I put again my y here that is b plus c and uh, then you can directly get that your x is equal to a plus b plus c. So you have this equation and obviously this will obviously be satisfied here because now x is a plus b plus c which is obviously larger than c so this condition also be satisfied so you can directly get out these equations that you can actually just print out the answer. So this is not very intuitive, but you can just have to solve all these equations if you are good at solving out. But yeah, it will come by practice only, nothing much complicated here as well. Just a one liner. So the answer is just that you have to print out three numbers that is x, y, z. The answer is like x is a plus b plus c, y is b plus c and z is equal to c. Super simple. Now moving down to the third problem. The third problem is column swapping. So you are given a grid n rows and m columns where each cell has a positive integer written on it. Stay focused on the problem statement. Let's call a grid good if each row in the sequence of numbers is sorted in a non-decreasing order. Okay, and I, I hope you know what is non-decreasing. Uh, if you want to understand like what is non-decreasing, like you just, just reverse it. it so it's non-decreasing. So just remove what noun. So decreasing also swap out. It is like increasing. So non-decreasing and increasing are different, but still like you can just form an analogy so that it will become more clear to you. So in an increasing sequence, all the next number are greater than the previous number, but in like in non-decreasing, they can be equal also. That's just a difference. Okay. Now you have some sort of a grid. You can just visualize a grid. You just want a grid to be good and the grid is good when the all the rows, the numbers are non-decreasing. Now you can do an operation exactly once. Now stay focused on this term as well. I highly like seen in problems when I was I see exactly once what I try to come up with a solution is that I find out a contradiction which I can solve by doing an operation once okay then I'll do that operation and then in the end I'll check that okay I have done an operation whether my whole grid now becomes good because I can only do the operation once so why not do it and after doing it just check that whether my grid becomes good so the overall problem statement comes back to the problem statement that you can swap out two columns. So you can swap two columns in this whole grid such that and it is and the columns are not necessarily different. Also stay focused on the black or the highlighted things that they should not be different as well. You can swap the same column though it will not meant anything if you swap the same column with itself but you can swap the same column itself also. So can you think of when you want to swap it? it? It actually just means that if the whole grid is already good so you can swap the whole, like the same column with itself, it will not change the whole grid. So they are just trying to say here is that uh, you you can do at most one step. Okay, so you can do zero step or one step. By zero step, it means that swap the same column. One step that you can swap two different columns. And there are two different columns, you want to just find out that whether there is a way to get out uh, the grid to be as good. Okay, now can you find out that whether it is possible or not? That's the whole problem that if it is possible, just print out those two uh, columns that you want to swap out. Okay. Now how you can do that? It's very simple that you have to do the same thing. You just have to find out that what all are the contradictory positions. Now they can be multiple ways, but the very simple is that find out the contradictory positions. Now how you can find out. So you know that you have a like whatever column or like whatever row you have in every position, like 
every row you know in the grid okay so you know the, you know the row and you want it to be non decreasing so you can just sort out the numbers so you can make a copy of that row sort it out when you sort out you know that okay i want to reach this state and i have this state okay so so let's take an example also so that it will become more clear to you the whole state is let's say 1 2 3 that is like all the sorted all out so uh let us take 2 3 2 3 2 those three columns yeah this one let's take this one so six uh let's read this out first so the 6 to 1 6 2 1 5 4 3 and you want to make this a good if you want if you can you can just print out the row like the columns else you can print out minus 1 minus 1 So you know you know you want to actually just make this row and this row like sorted in a non decreasing manner. So you know that if this row should be non decreasing manner you want to sort out what is the actual scenario that how this row will look like. This row will look like 1 2 and 6 like in like non decreasing which means that you can say that in increasing manner. So it like it should look like this. So in this scenario you can just match out this row with this row and find out what all numbers are not correct. Okay, because those rows you have like those columns you can swap. So if you just match out, this is not the same. This is same. This is not same. So you find out that okay, I have two possible candidates which I can swap. Okay, so you can push out these column numbers in some vector. You can just say, or like some container that the zeroth column and the second column. Okay, now if the columns that are contradicting are more than two. Then the answer is obviously no because you can do only one step. If it is less than, like there are no contradictory columns, then the answer is that, uh, then the answer is cool. Which means that it if there are no contradictory columns, then what you can directly do is that uh, you can just print out or you can just swap the same column again, which means that doing nothing. Or else, if you are if there are only two columns, then you can just swap out. Now how you can do that? You can you can just do a for loop over this column, swap these two elements out, swap these two elements out. and after swapping out this column you can just check that whether the grid has become like good by good i means that you can just check out whether all the columns like all the rows are non decreasing after doing this swap if it is the answer is yes i have done this operation else the answer is no because i only have one step i have done that and even after that it is not a good grid so answer is no i cannot do that cool that's the overall logic and code like the logic part nothing much complicated here as well but let us move down to the solution of this Okay, so what we have done here is that we have taken the input of the grid here. Here, then this is counting out a vector that is what are the bad columns. Then iterating over every like row, so taking out the row copy that is sorting out that row, and just matching out at what positions they are not currently matching. And if they are not matching, pushing out that particular column indexes in that particular bad vector, so that we have all the bad. Uh, Now, if the size of those bad columns is zero, which means that I have no bad columns, then the answer is one, like one and one, which means that you can swap the same column. It's it, like it just means that the grid is good. I don't need to do any operation. If it is greater than two, which means that I have more than two columns that are bad, it's I cannot like sort them out. Uh, like do one operation and make it good. So answer is minus one. Else, I can just if I have only two columns that are bad, I can just swap them out using a for loop over that. every row swap those two columns out so those two columns just swap out those particular numbers okay else now after doing this you have to just check that after doing this whole operation the, the grid should become good so it it iterate over the whole grid and just check that it should be a non decreasing so it's if it is non decreasing then answer is fine if it is increasing like it is at any point of time non decreasing sorry it it is uh, it is not decreasing it's non increasing you can just say that So the answer is like minus one. Now it is like not following our condition. Answer is minus one. Else, if it is good, then you can just print out the columns that you have just exchanged that is stored in this bad uh, vector, and just and just add one to it because it is like one to indexing, and the we are talking about zero indexing, so we can just add one to it. So that is the overall logic and code part for all the three problems from the latest code forces round. Thank you.